Hi guys, Chris here from Tech Tablets with the Surface Pro 4. This is the Core M version, so it's got the M3, the 6Y30, and 4GB of RAM and 128GB SSD on board it. So to show you quickly my device manager, just to show you the disk drive that I have, on board is the NVMe Samsung drive. And because it's the 128GB version, it's not particularly fast. The speeds are actually very disappointing for the price of this machine. I'd really wish Microsoft had just gone with the standard. Maybe even a, a SATA 3 could probably be faster than this. I mean, look at those write speeds there. Pretty average for this kind of price range. I know this is just the entry-level model, but however, I think it, it sh they should have gone for a different model at least. So this is the uh, micro SD card that I have on board. It's a Samsung 64 gigabyte Evo. And those are the speeds I got out of it. Pretty much the kind of maximum speeds that I can get out of this card anyway. So that's good to see there. You know, I did run a few other benchmarks for those that are interested in benchmarks before I do my little gaming test. Just quickly show you, this is the Geekbench 3 score. Now I will have in the description of this video actual links to these benchmarks if you want to check them out for yourselves and go over the finer details. But you see the single core score is approximately 400 points higher than the old Core M 5Y10 which is in the Cube i7 stylus right here. Sorry, here. So 2050, single thread, and 4213. So you can see the difference between those two. It's quite a bump up in performance and very nice to see that actually. Good increase there. Well done Intel. Now when we have a look at the 3D Mark 11 scores, that was the one I accidentally just flashed you before. So we've got P 1310 and if we have a look at the older 5y10 core m the last generation the fifth generation one comes in at 807 so again quite a nice bump there in graphics so both on the cpu and graphics side there there's a nice bump and the, the last test that i did actually run just for the sake of those looking around was ice storm 1.2 so 40,000, almost 41,000 there not a bad score considering this is a fanless tablet remember now throughout the entire time I've had the tablet on and doing these benchmarks running them, I have had HW Info running in the background just to keep an eye on the temperatures. If you have a look here, maximum temperature it actually got up to just through all those benchmarks was 54 degrees, which I think is quite good. And of course no thermal throttling, nothing like that there. Now I've had the tablet on for just over two hours at the moment. Now I'm going to go on to do just some gaming tests, just try out some Counter-Strike and a few other different games. So it'll be interesting, interesting to see, will it actually throttle and the kind of temperatures it's going to get up to. And I will actually check out at the end of the video with my thermal probe, just have a look at the surface temperatures of the outside of the surface. So I've already got 55% of memory used up here. I'll just jump into Steam now. Oh, for like four. That's available. Mm, I should actually be playing that instead of doing this. But anyway, let's have a look at some gaming. Let's jump into Counter Strike. So these are the settings I'm going to use within Counter Strike Global Offensive here. I'm just going to jump into the Dust 2 map, find a public game, and see how that runs. Keep in mind that the frames are right up here at the top left hand corner there. Here we go. Please keep in mind that I'm a complete, absolute noob at this game. I'm just so bad. You know, it's just a joke. Really, my skills are horrible, so I've got no pro skills to show off here. The main reason is just have a look at the frame rate. And I died. So you can see the frame rate is really good there. So I'm going to mess about with the resolution here and just increase that and see what kind of difference that's going to make on the performance. So to completely stress it out, I just decided to go and put the na native resolution. So 24 frames per second running at that crazy 2736 by 1824. Not recommended, but you see it can actually be playable at that resolution on low settings 
which is remarkable, really. Obviously, I'm pushing the system to the max here. Okay, so I put it down back to 1280 by 800 and some higher settings to make it all nice and pretty there. See how it runs now. Definitely looks a lot nicer, but the frame rate has dropped right down to when I first had it on very low settings. A little bit of a stutter there. There's some screen tearing going on, I can see as well, just a little tiny bit of it there. This guy's got a fancy looking gun. And I died again. Okay, I think that's enough of Counter-Strike there. Move on to the next game. Trying to now run Skyrim. And it seems I'm going to have to use windowed mode here because it doesn't want to actually work. All it wants to use is the full actual native resolution there. Look, so I mean that's going to be, that's going to kill the performance. I'm going to have to do that at least 1280 by 800 and see how that runs. So there must be a way to actually be able to play this probably in full screen without the horrible window there. You probably have to search around the internet and find a way out how to do that. It doesn't seem too bad the frame rate. So to see what happens with a little bit of action on the screen. Yeah, definitely playable, this one. Further tweaking probably required to get it to run really smooth, but that's fine. So Skyrim, definitely, definitely playable. I mean, it was on the old, the last generation Core M, so. Dota 2, now, these are the settings I'm going to use. So basic settings on fastest. And 1920 by 1200. So this resolution looks to be perfectly playable. I'm playing a game against bots here. But we're hitting almost 90 frames per second there. Perfectly playable. You could probably increase the visual settings to make it look a little bit prettier. Yeah, 
He's quickly scrolled around the map. So the Surface Pro 4 has no trouble running this, the M3 version. I'll move on and check out some Team Fortress 2. Very quickly show you the settings. Twelve eighty by eight hundred. Everything else on low. Unbelievable, that guy died before me. Normally it's me who dies first. Sniper, I think. Yep. So there's a hacker on the server, or... Someone's having a bit of a cry there because they got headshot. Okay, looks what we do have someone spamming on there. Brilliant. He's dead. And I'm dead. So Team Fortress 2, yeah, that runs absolutely fine. You can probably increase the resolution, increase the settings. But I just ran everything on the lowest there. Look at this. This is hacker here. It's just spamming away. Now I'll have a very quick look and see what the temperature's got up to and see if it actually throttled or not. So what does HW Info tell us? Maximum temperature, 57 degrees. It's been on for three hours now. I've run benchmarks, done those gaming tests here. Obviously a lot longer than what you've seen on the video. So that is impressive. I am quite happy with those results there. Definitely no thermal throttling. So that's running very cool. 57 degrees. Just shows that that hybrid cooling that they're using. Okay, this doesn't have a fan in it, but it still has that copper plate just above the battery in between the screen. And let's have a look again at... Where is it? Intel... Let's have a look again. So the held that core frequency the whole time, the 2 gigahertz, the top boost, and the graphics processor, okay, that was bouncing up and down a little bit, so that couldn't hold the highest clock rate there, but still, 57 degrees package temperature. It's not bad at all. Very quick look at the temperatures, surface temperatures. So 40 degrees almost. Excellent temperatures, really. It feels warm to the touch. But it's not scorching or anything like that. I'm sure the, the i5 version is probably very hot by now and the fan would be screaming away, which is why I love these just fanless computing is just so much better. So there's a quick look at benchmarks and gaming. Thank you for watching the video. If you do want to see more on this tablet, I'll try and get some more videos out, maybe a few other gaming tests as well. So let me know in the comments if you do want to see some other games or anything. Test it out. I will try to fit that in for you.